Why do we get so attached to our possessions that we cannot declutter any of them or we can't declutter certain things? That's a question we're going to be answering today because I realized in my own life with my own minimalism journey that there are a lot of reasons that hold us back from decluttering in the way that we'd like to. And it varies from like thing to thing and season to season. So if you are just like running up against a wall, you just feel like you are blocked from decluttering. You can't do it in the way that you want to. My hope is that this video can help you figure out sort of what's going on. Now you have to promise me before we go on any further that you will not feel shame about your reason or reasons for not decluttering, right? Because everything on this list that we're going to go through today, um, those are all like normal healthy things, ways that you can relate to your stuff. In some ways, it's actually very useful to relate to your stuff in those ways. However, and this is where we get into trouble. If we apply it to everything, or if we have it too strongly, it can get in our way and actually make us have too much stuff, too much clutter, and actually make our lives harder instead of making our lives better. So we're going to talk today about what those problems might be. And like, I wanted to be able to also talk about the solutions in this video, but I realized as I started filming that like, it was just going to be way too long if I did that. So today we're just going to talk about like awareness, what might be holding us back. We can sort of do a little bit of soul searching, think about it. And then in the next video, which I promise I will link to as soon as I can, as soon as I can get it up, um, we will talk about solutions based on like what might be holding us back. So Let's just start today, get right into it. What are the things that hold us back from decluttering and keep us attached to things we don't need? The first thing on my list is security. Having things can help us feel secure, right? Like if you have a box of pasta in your cupboard, you know that you're going to have something to eat tonight. That's a very simple example, but there are a lot more complicated examples that I'm sure you can think of with your own life. Like all the things on this list, it is important because sometimes it's true. You do sometimes have to have things to make sure that your life goes smoothly. You stay clothed, you aren't hungry, you know, you can keep things repaired or whatever. Like you do sometimes need things for your own safety, security, comfort, and that's okay. Um, but I think that where we run into trouble is when we think that we need everything that we currently own in order to feel secure. And especially if you have had times in your life where you haven't had enough and that has caused problems for you, you can especially cling to this maybe more than you want to or more than you need to. So finding security in your things might be causing problems for you if you feel a tightness in your chest at the thought of getting rid of things. Now, this doesn't actually have to be a tightness in your chest. It's just sort of like anything that you can bodily feel that's anxiety. So like for me, that's often tightness in my chest, but it could also be like you clench your teeth or you just end up closing in on yourself a little bit. Like thinking about getting rid of things makes you anxious. Another thing might be you find yourself holding on to things just in case, but you can't actually think of any likely scenarios in which you might use them. Now, likely is the operative word here, right? Like I think that we can all imagine situations in which we might need our things, but if you imagine a situation in which you need a thing and you're going like, okay, that outcome is not actually super likely, but I still want to hold on to this thing anyway, security might be causing you to hold on to things that you would be better off without. Another thing might be that you tend to stockpile. So you never run out. This might be food. This might be clothing. This might be like toiletries. It might be like not practical items either. It might, it might just be like, you know, DVDs or whatever, anything that you stockpile because you don't want to run out of it could be a sign that security is holding you back. Friends or family might describe you as a hoarder. Now I do not actually like the term hoarder and I don't think that you should apply it to yourself because it's unnecessarily negative and shame inducing. But if people close to you who know you well and have seen, you know, your house or your living space have maybe ventured into that territory, um, it could just be that they're mean. So, you know, you're more than welcome to write that off, but it could also be that they see you finding too much security in the things that you have to a point that it is actually like stopping you from having the space that you want or living the life that you want. And that's important to know. And then finally, not having enough of something really, really, really bothers you, maybe makes you feel panicked or anxious 
or whatever. The next thing that can hold us back from decluttering is sentimentality. Um, this is a big one for me. It has been pretty much my whole life because things that we own can remind us of people, places, times in our lives that we have loved. And those memories are important. And in fact, I wouldn't recommend getting rid of everything in your life that has sentimental value. I think that that is a way to very quickly make sure that your surroundings feel sterile and cold and that your life um, maybe feels a little bit more meaningless on the days that you're down. But um, I also know, and I'm sure that you have seen this with other people. I've seen it with myself. I've seen it with family members where sentimentality actually makes us keep too many things that we're not using because we're attached to them because they're related to a person, a place, a time in our lives, memories that we hold dear. And so the struggle, if you tend to be sentimental about your things, is to maintain that balance of one, holding on to the things that are truly meaningful to you and that, you know, bring happiness and joy into your life, but not holding on to too many things so that you're bogged down by them, right? And that is a very fine line to walk. But I think in order to get the maximum amount of like nostalgia or sentimentality or like the good feelings that are associated with those things that we keep because they remind us of things, we actually have to have fewer things, but more important things so that we have space to really look at and appreciate them. So sentimentality might be causing you to be overly attached to your stuff. If you feel guilty for getting rid of things people have given you, that you don't use. So someone gives you something as a gift maybe, or because they thought of you and you aren't going to use it. You haven't used it, but you find yourself feeling like, Oh, I can't get rid of it because that person gave it to me. That might be where sentimentality is holding you back. Um, another thing could be you find yourself sometimes believing that keeping things is a symbol of how much someone or something means to you. Um, or maybe you find yourself holding on to anything that reminds you of a specific person or time in your life, instead of being selective about the things that remind you of that very special moment or person or relationship. Um, you might also be able to figure out that you have a really sentimental attachment to things. If you get offended when people don't use or appreciate or keep the things that you give them. And then finally, If you think a lot about who you want to get what when you die, that might be a sign that you have a lot of sentimentality attached to your things. And again, this is not a negative thing. It's just something that could be holding you back from decluttering if you feel like you have too much stuff in your space that you aren't using. The third thing on my list is practicality because, I mean, let's face it. Things are useful. We have things so that we can use them. And I included this one because I do think it is different from security. You might be like, oh, well, like, you know, if you're holding on to things for security and you're holding on to things for practicality, that's kind of the same thing. And oftentimes they do go together. Like if you struggle with security, you may go, okay, well, I don't actually need this to feel secure, but it is practical to keep. So I'm going to keep it anyway, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's the case. I know people who struggle with getting rid of things because of practicality, but don't actually find security in having things. And the difference here is that with security, you feel like, okay, I need to hold on to this because I may never have it again, right? Like there's a little bit of a scarcity mindset. With practicality, there isn't. There's more of a, oh, well, I have this thing and that will make my life easier down the road. You know, maybe I won't have to go out and buy it. Maybe I got a really good deal on it. And so I don't want to have to spend more money to get this thing again. You know, whatever the reason might be, when you are holding on to things for practical reasons, you're saying it is okay to have a little bit extra in my life now to add a little bit of complexity into my possessions so that I make my life easier later. Security is really just about like worst case scenarios and holding on to things to hold on to things because you're afraid of what might happen if you let go. There's not a lot of fear in practicality, but there is a lot of calculation and thinking about deals, thinking about convenience, thinking about time savings. And I will say like, we all make practicality trades every single moment of our lives, right? There's a certain point where practicality is very, very helpful. It's good to have a few extra rolls of toilet paper in your house than you need. Like, right. Like you don't want to time it down to the minute because what if someone comes over or what if something unexpected happens, but 
it can be too much if you have specific situations in your mind where you might need the things that you're keeping, but those situations probably won't happen in the next year, right? Like I feel like for me, a year is a really good um, cutoff point because, you know, there might be something that I use once a year, like maybe for Christmas, and I want to keep it for that once a year occasion. I don't want to have too many of those things, but it's okay if I have a few, right? And I have space for them. Another reason could be that you tend to hold on to things you aren't using and could easily replace. And then finally, you buy things because they're a good deal, but you don't use them up quickly or ever. The next one on my list is overwhelm and exhaustion. And I have been there. I, I probably have personally been there this week. And I, I think that we all have. Sometimes life can be so overstimulating and overwhelming that it is hard to actually make ourselves declutter. The problem is that we don't always see overwhelm and exhaustion for what they are. And sometimes even when we do see them for what they are, we don't view them as a good enough excuse to give ourselves grace on the decluttering front. And so we actually make our overwhelm, exhaustion, and decluttering situation worse. If you're harder on yourself when you don't declutter or you don't declutter to your own standards, then you actually set yourself up to do even worse next time because you beat yourself up. And then the next time that you want to do it, you're just thinking about how you beat yourself up again because you didn't live up to your own standards and on and on and on. And it just creates this very vicious negative cycle where you just get more overwhelmed and exhausted by life and by the idea of decluttering. And so you want to do it less and less and less. You might be stuck in this overwhelm and exhaustion cycle. If you often feel too tired to declutter, um, you're not sure where to start and that's holding you back from doing anything. You constantly beat yourself up for the mess or for not decluttering. You call yourself things like a hoarder. You don't feel like you have the time or energy to declutter And there are a lot of other overwhelming or stressful things happening in your life right now. And if this is you, we are, I promise, going to talk about things in the next video that can help. But I think the big one here that I do not want to like not put in this video is that you need to be able to find a way to be okay with the fact that you can't declutter as much as, as much or at all right now. Like If you can give yourself grace for the way that your space looks, for the amount of things that you own right now, it will make it easier down the line when life gets a little less hectic for you to go back to decluttering. So be as gentle as you can with yourself. And I know it can be hard sometimes, but you've got this and it's not the end of the world if your space is a little bit cluttered and messy. The next item on my list is perfectionism. Um, I think this is related to the overwhelm and exhaustion. Um, because a lot of times perfectionism is what kicks in and start makes it, and starts making us feel like we can't do decluttering because we're not doing it right. So perfectionism is sneaky because it can hold you back from getting started. And then once you have started, it can hold you back because it will tell you that you are not doing it the right way. Um, perfectionism might be keeping you from decluttering if you're doing a lot of research about minimalism and decluttering and stuff, but you're not actually decluttering or simplifying anything in your life, um, you're convinced that there's a right and a wrong way to declutter and you can't start until you figure it out. Um, you sometimes get sad and overwhelmed because it feels like there's so much to do and you're never sure how you'll get your home to this spotless, beautiful state that you envision it being in. Or you try to declutter, but you're never satisfied with the progress you've made when you do. And now listen, if this is you, I'm glad that you're watching my video. I'm glad that you're doing your research. Um, but I would encourage you, and I will encourage you in my other video, to do one small thing to get started and kick perfectionism out because it's not helping you have the life that you want. And in fact, you would be closer to the life that you want if you would be okay with imperfect progress. The thing here is like with perfectionism that you can make the process of simplifying your life so complicated that you never start. And so you miss out on the joy of having a less cluttered space because you won't have a perfectly decluttered space. And I think that's a shame. So that's why I'm really excited to talk about how to change that. Okay, and I only have two more reasons left on this list, but they're both sort of related to each other. So um, for both of them, I am talking about holding on to versions of ourselves. Um, Before I was talking sort of about our relationship with our things, and this certainly still 
affects our relationship with our things. Don't get me wrong. But for these last two, we're talking about how we look at ourselves. And so the first one of these last two is holding on to past versions of ourselves. Now, this might be for sentimental reasons. This might be for perfectionistic reasons. It might be for security. Like there's any number of reasons that we might look at a past version of ourselves and think, man, she or he had had it going on and I want that again. Maybe there are things that you are sure you will get back to one day, like hobbies. And so you're just holding on to all the supplies even though you haven't used them in years. And I will say that in small doses, this is okay. You don't have to be constantly reinventing yourself and shedding everything from your past, especially if those things from your past brought you joy and made you happy. But holding on to past versions of yourself for too much or for too long can definitely hold you back and make your um, home very cluttered. And so this might be getting in the way if your closet is full of clothes that no longer fit you, you don't love and haven't been able to wear for a long time. I'll let you decide what that long time means. For me, it's a year, but I know things like sickness, pregnancy, stuff like that can um, mess with our bodies for like longer than a year. And so if you um, have a situation where you're like, wow, you know, I gained weight because of this specific thing and it's going to take me longer than a year. I think it's okay to hold on to that. Another thing might be you have tons of supplies for hobbies that you never practice and don't have any real interest in picking up again, right? So like um, for me at one point in my life, I was super into beating. Now I'm talking about like junior high. Um, I really liked like making bracelets, earrings, stuff like that. Um, but then at some point, and I think it was in college near the beginning of my minimalism journey, I realized like I'm holding on to all of this stuff because I paid money for it. People got it for me. I have it all, but I don't, when I think about it, I don't really get excited about working on these things anymore. Might be time to get rid of it. Then I did. I got rid of it. And I can say like, I haven't really regretted it. Another thing might be your house is full of knickknacks from a previous era in your life, but you don't love them anymore. Um, and then finally, you feel bad about not using the possessions you used to use all the time. You are allowed to change and there's no reason that you have to feel badly about leaving some things behind. And then the final thing that can hold us back from decluttering the way that we want to is holding on to idealized versions of ourselves. So this is kind of the opposite of the last one, right? Like in the last one, we were sort of looking back on something that was reality, or at least we believe was reality, like something that we have been in the past. And so in theory, we could achieve that again. This is something that we have never been, but we are looking to this like ideal and perfect future. And we're thinking someday I'm going to be the kind of person that uses those things. I'm not today, but I will be someday. And I know I've done this. I bought clothes that I'm like, those will fit me when I lose weight. Or I've bought things for a new workout regimen that I've never started. And then when it's time to get rid of it, it feels like we're letting ourselves down because we are close. It feels like closing the chapter on a dream that we never realized. But in the meantime, while we're just feeling bad about the fact that we aren't achieving those goals, we have to live with the clutter and we have to be weighed down by all these things and by the weight of our believed in but unrealized potential. And so as much as it can be painful to get rid of things that like have an idealized version of ourselves attached to them, it is sometimes necessary to get rid of those things. And so this might be the case for you if you have a lot of aspirations about how you could use your things, but you haven't used them. Um, you're an imaginative person who always has a ton of ideas, especially around who you want to become and how you're going to use things. Um, you're the type of person who kind of decides that you want to do things spontaneously, then goes out and buys all the equipment, but maybe you don't ever use it. And then finally, you're dissatisfied with who you are right now and you feel like buying one more thing will fix it. But the problem is that it doesn't. That's a clever marketing trick that society has sold us. But for the most part, when we are deeply dissatisfied with ourselves, buying one more thing, starting a new hobby, working on new habits doesn't actually fix how we feel because it's deeper than that. Okay, um, I think that about covers it. Like I said, I think this video was long enough without talking about what you can do about it. But as soon as I get this video up, I promise I will film, edit, and post that video. I will post it here when it's done. Um, in the meantime, I've created a cheat sheet that has all of these reasons and what you can sort of look for um, to decide 
um, what's holding you back. And so if you'd like me to email you that, I will put a link in the description. Um, and thank you so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful. Have a great day.